Let's read the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Page 553. Twenty fifty two. Teacher, what must I do? Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? To the young man who asked this question, Jesus answered first by invoking the necessity to recognize God as the one there is who is good, as the supreme good and the source of all good. Then Jesus tells him, If you would enter life, keep the commandments. And he cites for his question are the precepts that concern love of neighbor. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. Finally, Jesus sums up these commandments positively. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. To this first reply, Jesus adds a second. If you would be perfect, go. Sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. This reply does not do away with the first. Following Jesus Christ involves keeping the commandments. The law has not been abolished, but rather man is invited to rediscover it in the person of his master, who is its perfect fulfillment. In the three synoptic gospels, Jesus is called to the rich young man to follow him in the obedience of a disciple and in the observance of the commandments is joined to the call to poverty and chastity. The evangelical, evangelical counsels are inseparable from the commandments. Jesus acknowledged the Ten Commandments, but he also showed the power of the Spirit at work in their letter. He preached a righteousness which exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees as well as that of the Gentiles. He unfolded all the demands of the commandments. You have heard that it was said to the men of old, You shall not kill. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. When someone asks him which commandment is the law is the greatest, Jesus replies, You shall love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, the decalogue, must be interpreted in light of this twofold yet single commandment of love, the fullness of the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this sentence. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. The Decalogue in Sacred Scripture, the word Decalogue means literally ten words. God revealed these ten words to his people on the holy mountain. They were written with the finger of God, unlike the other commandments written by Moses. They are preeminently the words of God. They are handed on to us in the books of Exodus and Deuteronomy. Beginning with the Old Testament, the sacred books refer to the ten words, but it is in the new covenant in Jesus Christ that their full meaning will be revealed. The Decalogue must first be understood in the context of the Exodus, God's great liberating event at the center of the Old Covenant, whether formulated as negative commandments, prohibitions, or as pr positive precepts such as honor your father and mother. The ten words point out the conditions of a life freed from the slavery of sin. The Decalogue is the path of life. If you love the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by keeping his commandments and his statutes, in his ordinances, then you shall live and multiply. This liberating power of the Decalogue appears, for example, in the commandment about the Sabbath rest, directed also to foreigners and slaves. You shall remember that you were a servant in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out thence with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. The ten words sum up and proclaim God's law. These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly at the mountain of the mist of fire, the cloud and the thick darkness with a loud voice and he added no more and he wrote them upon two tables of stone and gave them to me for this reason these two ta tables are called the testimony in fact they contain the terms of the covenant concluded between god and his people these tables of the testimony were to be deposited in the ark the ten words are pronounced by god in the midst of a theophany 
the Lord spoke with you face to face at the mountain out of the midst of the fire. They belong to God's revelation of himself and his glory. The gift of the commandments is the gift of God himself and his holy will. In making his will known, God reveals himself to his people. The gift of the commandments and of the law is part of the covenant God sealed with his own. In Exodus, the revelation of the ten words is granted between the proposal of the covenant and its conclusion after the people had committed themselves to do all that the Lord had said and to obey it. The Decalogue is never handed on without first recalling the covenant. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The commandments take on their full meaning within the covenant. According to scripture, man's moral life has all its meaning in and through the covenant. The first of the ten words recalls that God loves his people first. Since there was a passing from the paradise of freedom to the slavery of this world and punishment for sin, the first phrase of the Decalogue, the first word of God's commandments, bears on freedom. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The commandments, properly so called, come in the second place. They express the implications of belonging to God through the establishment of the covenant. Moral existence is a response to the Lord's loving initiative. It is the acknowledgement and homage given to God and a worship of thanksgiving. It is a cooperation with the plan God pursues in history. The covenant and the dialogue between God and man are also attested to by the fact that all the obligations are stated in the first person. I am the Lord and addressed by God to another personal subject. You, in all God's commandments, the singular personal pronoun designates the recipient god makes his will known to each person in particular at the same time as he makes it known to the whole people the lord prescribed love love towards god and taught justice towards neighbor so that man would be neighbor unjust nor unworthy of god thus through the decalogue god prepared man to become his friend and to live in harmony with his neighbor the words of the decalogue remain likewise for us christians far from being abolished they have received amplification and development from the fact of the coming of the Lord in the flesh. Thank you for listening. God bless you, and I love you.